All right, I'm all excited about this video. This one is about loops. I am programming. It's nice to be able to make your code loop. Uh, the technical name is iteration, which means to repeat. There's a couple of different types of loops you can do in programming languages, but three popular ones that most languages have. There's something called the do while loop, there's the while loop, and there's the for loop. Um, all three can make the code loop, uh, but there are certain times when one might be a little better to code in than the other. You'll figure that out as you gain experience coding. So let's get right into it and just let's see how these uh, loop codes make the code loop. So I'm going to do something really simple here. I'm going to set a variable x equal to 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right into my loop. So the do loop, you say do. And as soon as you type the do out there, you'll see it completes the block of code. I've just auto-coded there. Curly brace, curly brace. So basically what I'm saying here is I'm saying do this block of code. And that's the code that's going to be repeating over and over and over. So the code I want to repeat is going to be system out print line x. And every time I go through the loop, I'm going to make x increase by 1. Now, that's the chunk that's going to repeat. But when does it repeat and when does it stop repeating? Well, the do command basically makes this happen at least once. And then after it does this code once, it might repeat depending on this condition. I'm going to say do while x is less than 5. Now that's the condition which will make it go back up here and do it again. So remember what the do loop. Okay, This do loop does it at least once. Then it might repeat depending on whether or not this is true or not. This is just like your if statements. This is basically a condition in here that evaluates the true or the false. So when this runs through the first time, right, x is 1, and then it comes down, prints out 1, and then it adds 1, now it's 2. If x is less than 5, yes it is, it goes back up here, prints out x. Well, x is now 2, then it adds 1, x is 3. Is x less than 5? Well, 3 is less than 5 is true, it goes back out, prints a 3 goes to 4. 4 less than 5? Yes. Prints out the 4. Goes up to 5. Is 5 less than 5? 5 is not less than 5. It does not go back up. And then it gets out here and that's basically it. Okay, it just continues on and there's no more code. So when you actually see this running here, I think what we did was we saw it print out 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe 5. 4. Well, let's see. Give it a little run, and there we go. It's printed out 1, 2, 3, 4. Now it's possible you could set a condition here that just doesn't ever happen, like, well, x is less than 0. This will never repeat. So the do code will make this print out 1 when it starts, because x is 1. And then, absolute the 2, while x is less than 0, nope, never repeats at all. Okay, now that's the most simple Okay, do while loop. I want to show you now just the while loop. Okay, and what that one looks like. So the while loop looks something like this. I'll just use a different variable, integer y. The while loop, you start with a while statement. So you can say while y is less than 10. You know what? I'm going to start this one a little higher so it counts down. I'll start that at 9. And I'm going to say while y is greater or equal to 1, do the following code. System out print line y. And I'll say y equals y minus 1. Okay, so y is going to go down in this example instead of counting up. And let's fix my spell in there. There we go. Okay, so this is an example of the while loop. Now the while loop, right? may not even happen once. Okay. Now in this example, y is 9, and I say while y is greater or equal to 1, which it is, it's going to go and run this code. right? And then this cycle keeps happening. Now if you actually follow this along, it's 9, it prints out 9, it minuses 1, it's 8. It comes back up. Is y still greater or equal to 1? Yes. 8. 
7. Comes back up. Is it greater or equal to 1? Yes. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Eventually it becomes 0. Is 0 greater or equal to 1? No. It doesn't do it again. And then the code, that shouldn't be there. Then the code continues on. So we'll just give this a quick run. And you'll look at what it prints. The first number to print should be 9. And the last number to print should be there's our 9876543 and the last number is 1. It's really easy for beginners to sort of miss the end point by 1 based on these things here, right? That does make a difference. Less than or equals or just less than. Same thing here, right? Greater than 1, greater to equal to 1, greater or equal to 0, greater to 0. You know, you should be good at determining, you know, when these things will start and stop. Okay? That's your basic while loop. Now the third one that does a little counting for us is the for loop. The for loop, you're instantly going to say, I don't like that one. I'd much rather use the do loop. But trust me, the for loop will get used a lot, especially in the AP Computer Science course. So you've got to know this one well. Here it is. For the for loop, the basic way it works is you write for, and for general purposes, you have some sort of counter. I'm just going to call my counter k here. I'm going to say k starts at 1. Now, this is one way you can do it. I made an integer right there. Now, here's the weird thing. You put the semicolon, and now i got to type a little more. I put my condition that this loop should keep going. So I want k to start at 1, and I want k to keep going until it hits, I don't know, let's try 7. What happened there? K is less than or equal to 7, another semicolon, and then how do you want k to change inside the loop? I'd like k to go up by 1, just for simple purposes here. k, what a bad typing day, k equals k plus 1. Now, what am I going to do in the loop? System dot out dot print line. I'll just say k is now k just so you can follow along and see what this is doing, right? And I'll fix mine there, print line. Now, this looks really weird, but let's just go over those parts again. Sort of an initial starting value, k equals 1. Okay, it's a new variable. Keep doing this loop while k is less than or equal to 7. And every time you finish the code inside this block here, do this to k. Add 1 to it. So k is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's see the output of this one. We should see a little 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now it looked more complicated to write out, but what most students tell me is this is the one they prefer using when it's appropriate to use the for loop. Okay, it reads really nicely. Start at 1, keep going while you're less than or equal to 7, and go up by 1s. If you really look at it, it's really no different than the while loop. There's a condition to keep going. There's a condition to keep going. There's an adjustment to the variable inside the loop. There's an adjustment to the variable inside the loop. There's a starting value. There's a starting value. Not bad, right? This here occurs right here. Okay, it occurs after the code. It doesn't occur before the code. Okay, like that. And so that's when that K plus 1 line takes place. Now, in the next video, we're going to sort of look at, well, big deal. I can count up and down by a couple numbers, right? But you're going to see how this actually becomes really useful later on in the course when we do lists and other stuff. So what I want you to take a look at here is the basic structure of all three of these. Make sure you sort of get the starting values, the finishing values, and the pattern that's happening inside. Keep it in mind these are very uh, boring, just basic ones to get you warmed up to this. So go answer a few little questions after this, probably uh, reading a couple codes, and make sure you're able to predict the output perfectly. 
And then we're actually going to take a look in the next video at looking at some better uses of these three loops, right? That actually do some more uh, substantial tasks that you might use in a program. Thanks for watching.